air prop. So we're going to look here for this air propagation is with multiplication and division. That's what we're going to specifically look at here. Um, we're going to use our same conventions as previous with Q being just the traditional way we do math and del Q being the deviation or the uncertainty in the actual measurement uh, as we combine values together. Now if we're multiplying or dividing values together, um, we do some similar things to the addition subtraction and some things change. For what's similar, whenever you find the actual value Q, you just need to multiply and divide all of the measured values that you need to multiply and divide together. It's just the traditional math you've always done. So if I had you know, a few measurements, maybe something like, oh, what's three times four divided by two? Well, your Q value would just be 12 divided by two, which is six. Duh, we could always do that. That's what we did years ago. So in general, we could write Q as just being some numbers multiplied together, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, whatever, how many numbers you have, divided by however many numbers you need to divide by, or however many measurements you need to divide by, X, Y, and Z. So we're just multiplying and dividing things together, just like we always have. That's how we just do our mathematics. That gives us the measured value of Q. To get the deviation on this Q, though, we need to add in quadrature. Now, the weird thing about adding in quadrature this time is instead of taking the root of the quantities squared, those quantities being the deviations, because we're multiplying here, we need to take fractional amounts of those deviations. So we need to take the deviation and what fraction of that per the actual measurement exists. What I mean by that is when we write this, it will be in quadrature. It'll be the fractional deviation of A. So del A over A. It's how much of that deviation exists of A squared. And then we do this for everything. So we just continue this for B and B squared. We do this all through C. We do this and then for X, Y, and Z. So we can just say plus dot, 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 dot. We add all these together, no matter if they're multiplying or dividing, but we get all the way out to z squared. We add them all up, and that gives us the deviation del q. Now, there's a little bit of a, a hiccup here because each of these values, these fractional amounts, those are all percentages. It's a unitless quantity, but this del q what we're looking for, it needs to have some unit. It's a part of some measurement, which means that if everything that we're adding in quadrature, whoops, Z, excuse me. If everything we're adding in quadrature there is a fractional quantity, then this del Q is also a fractional quantity. What really is on our left side here is it's del Q per the absolute value of Q which means that whenever we would like to find the uncertainty in Q, del Q, we need to take the quadrature of the uncertainties and multiply it by Q. That will give us the value of del Q there. Quick way we could kind of see this is uh, if we'd like to find uh, an impulse of something. Last year we learned that impulse J is equal to a force multiplied by a time. Well for multiplying these values together uh, let's take a look at what our impulse could be. Now the force that we measured let's say our force is something like oh, 13 newtons plus or minus 0.4 newtons. And let's say our time here is 3 seconds plus or minus 0.02 seconds. Well, let's multiply these together to find our impulse, our proper Q value, and then let's find the deviation of that. So to find 
our Q value, which I'm going to call J here, because it's the actual value we're looking for. Remember, when we say Q, we're looking just for what is the value when you just do the math. Whenever you just multiply these values together, what do you get? So to find that, we know that J is just going to equal F times T. 13 newtons times 3 seconds, that equals 39 newton seconds. Okay, that's nice. If we need to get the deviation of j though, we, we know that the deviation of j, deviation of the impulse, per the value of the impulse, that's the absolute value of 39 newton seconds, has to equal in quadrature 0.4 over 13, that's the deviation, 0.4, divided by the quantity of f, 13. So third, 0.4 over 13 squared, plus, and then our second quantity, is 0 0.02 divided by 3 squared. So let's just add this in quadrature real quick, get a number, and then we'll have to multiply that by 39. So this is just time to bust out the calculator. We're just running stats. So 0.4 divided by 13 gives me 0 0.03. When I square it, I get 9.4 times 10 to the minus 4. 0 0.02 divided by 3 squared. Added to that gives me 9.91 times 10 to the minus 4. And when I take the square root of that quantity, I find out that dj over 39 equals 0 0.034. What this means here is this number means that my value j, that 39, I'm off by 3 point, oops, excuse me, this wasn't 3.4, this was 3.1. What this means though is that this is a percentage here. So 0 0.031 is like being off by 3.1%. So when I have this value, when I say that the deviation of J, absolute value 39 equals 0 0.031, whenever I multiply by the 39, 0 0.031, when I multiply that by 39, I find out that the deviation on J is equal to 1.23 newton seconds, because remember, the unit of the 39 was newton seconds as well. So that allows my final answer for J to say that, hey, the impulse here was equal to 39 plus or minus 1.2, I'll just round to there, newton seconds. All we did is we multiplied together like we normally did to get that 39. And then we had to add fractional amounts in quadrature multiplied by the original value of j to get that percent amount we were off by, del j or dj, 1.23. And when we combine them, we have our uncertainty there. So that's how we can multiply and divide things in quadrature. We just showed multiplication here, but for division, you would just divide quantities and still add all of those uncertainties in quadrature there and you derive at a very similar method with uh, the results you're looking for. So with that, multiplication and division and quadrature are finished. Uh, if you still got more to watch here for air propagation, we still have to do powers and we still have to do functions, which we're gonna kind of uh, cheese through a little bit. Um, but check out the other videos for that. I'll put some links down in the stream. And if you haven't seen the addition air propagation uh, where you should have just come from, go back and check that out. That'll be at the bottom.